Hello everyone! Today we're going to be watching another episode of Star Trek The Original Series. We are still early on in Season 2 and that is wonderful news because that means there's still so many episodes that I will be able to watch for the first time. Today we're going to be watching an episode called Who Mourns for Adonis? Adonais? Adonais? Mayonnaise? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Hope you guys enjoy. You look a bit tired this morning. There's nothing like a wee bit of coffee to get you back in shape. Join me, Carolyn? All right, Scotty. Well, even from here, I can tell his pulse rate's up. Gentlemen. <laughs> come along, my dear. I'm not sure I like that, Jim. Yeah, how dare he have romantic feelings for someone? And he thinks he's the right man for her, but I'm not sure she thinks he's the right man. One day she'll find the right man, off she'll go, out of the service. Mm -hmm. I like to think of it not so much as losing an officer as gaining... Actually, I'm losing an officer. Okay. Pollux 4, class M type planet, oxygen, nitrogen, atmosphere. No life forms. Captain? What in the name of... A giant hand. Captain, that thing's a giant hand. <laughs> Uh... What is it, Mr. Spark? Is it, uh, a hand? Negative, Captain. A field of energy. It's coming for you! Ooh. It's almost as if it means to grab us. All in reverse. Yeah, I'd be a little bit worried, too. Oh, man. That guy on the ground there, he took his job Would seriously. He took a hard tumble there. So were they worried that Scotty was going to get his heart broken from a, a lady who doesn't, like, won't think of him that way and will eventually just run off with some other man? <laughs> I got you. Got your nose. <laughs> Try rocking the ship. Pull impulse power forward and back. No results, Captain. We stuck tight. Captain, a most curious development on scanner 57. Green on, Captain. Hello. Head floating out in space. Interesting. You are most welcome, my beloved children. Your places await you. You have left your plains and valleys and made this bold venture. You have made me proud. Daddy? God? The long wait has ended. Are you responsible for stopping the ship? Yes. I don't know who or what you are, but I must warn you, we have the power to defend ourselves. Release this ship. Agamemnon, Hector, Odysseus. I don't know what to think about this, but I feel like I should have paid more attention to my mythology. What is it? Greek? All right, whatever you're doing, turn it off. Pressure's gone, Captain. That was your first lesson. Remember it. I don't like this guy at all. Who and your officers to join me? You are returning home. Let your hearts prepare to sing. Questions. Who is he? What is he? How do we fight against him? How do we reason with him? I like the outfit. My children, long have I waited for this moment. You know of Earth? Search your most distant memories, those of the thousands of years past. And I am there. I am Apollo. And I am the Tsar of all the Russias. Mr. Jack. Sorry, <laughs> I never met a god before. And you haven't yet. Lots of questions. Zeus, Athena, Aphrodite, Artemis, we knew your Earth well 5,000 of your years ago. Would you mind telling us what you want without all the Olympian generalities? You will not leave this place. You will worship me, as your fathers did before you. So he is a godlike creature. But you're no god to us, mister. I said you would worship me. Maybe he is Apollo. Let the lesson begin. Welcome to Olympus, Captain Kirk. Nice camera angle there. Very well done. Mr. Spock, I can't contact the landing party. All frequencies are jammed. Try locate all life forms. I want to know what's going on down there. Coin a phrase. Fascinating. I 
think Spot coined it before you did. Lieutenant Palamas, what do you know about Apollo? Son of the god Zeus and Leto, a mortal. He was the god of light and purity. Obviously, he has some knowledge of Earth. The appearance of all this. Whatever he is, sir, he seems to control a remarkable technology. You can't do tricks like that without energy. Find the source of that power. Boom. Yeah. What if he is really Apollo? He is the being that all the myths were based around. Even if the myths aren't completely accurate to fact, there was somebody named Apollo back May then. May I ask what you offer in exchange for this worship? His power is limited, though. Because if he just wanted to be worshipped by humans, why not just go to Earth? The beauty. Grace. You seem wise for a woman. What is your name? Carolyn. You are beautiful. She is beautiful. You will know what it is to be a goddess. Leave her alone. You risk much. And so do you. Ooh. Then piss Scotty off. How'd you do it? I've grown weary of discussion and argument. None of your toys will function. You are a beauty. The bow arm should be bare. Ooh. Beautiful shade of pink. Oh, it's beautiful. What does Scotty think about that? She's not going with you. Scotty, you gotta learn your lesson here. It's all right, Captain. I'll go. Without fear, she is fit indeed. Okay. Captain, we've got to stop him. He wants her the way he looks. Mr. Scott. I understand your concern over her, but she volunteered to go with him. She's doing her job. I think it's about time you started doing yours. I want no more unauthorized action against Apollo. That's an order. Aye, aye, sir. Besides, your stiff-necked thistle head, you could have gotten yourself killed. <laughs> God, he doesn't believe in gods. Apollo's no god. He could have been taken for one, though. Once. A highly sophisticated group of space travelers landed on Earth. Yes. Creatures like that would have been gods. Mm -hmm. In fact, they couldn't have been taken for anything else. So they found a group of peoples who would worship them as if they were gods, and they liked that. I wonder why they left, though. Maybe most of them decided to move on, but Apollo wanted to stay and still wants to relive those days. There seems to be a radiated energy pulsation coming from the planet. I can't seem to pinpoint it, sir. I would suggest, Mr. Sulu, that if you cannot find out where the power source is, you should find out where it is not. The whole planet, sir? Yes, sir. The whole planet. Better get started. Of course, a girl doesn't go walking with a, a god every day. What happened to the others? They returned to the cosmos. You mean they died? No. We're immortal, we gods. God cannot survive as a memory. We need love, admiration, worship. As you need food. We could have struck out from Olympus and destroyed. We have no wish to destroy. Okay. But we had no strength to leave. You said the others didn't die. Even for a god, there's a point of no return. I knew you would come to the stars one day. But how has he survived all this time if he... Sit by my side. Even 5,000 years ago, the gods took mortals to them to love, to care for. They were gods of passion, of love. Some creatures can generate and control energy with no harm to themselves. The electric eel on Earth, the giant dry berm of Antos IV, the fluffy... Not the whole encyclopedia, Jack. fluffy what? The captain requires complete information. Spock's contaminating this boy, Jim. <laughs> But where is the source of that power? There's an extra organ in his chest that I can't even make a guess about. Where's Lieutenant Palamas? He is no longer of any concern to you. What have you done, Scotty? Scotty? What did Kirk say, Scotty? You wanted worshippers? You've got enemies. You want us to bow down? You have... I mean... You can worship in admiration, or I guess you could worship in fear. Discipline. You will learn. Oh. 
He's tired. Paul looked very strange when he disappeared. Tired or in pain. Mr. Chekhov, that might very well mean something. You think maybe he's off somewhere recharging his energy cells? Something like that. And if we can wear him out, overwork him, that might do it. The trouble with overworking him is that it can get us killed. Yeah. Not all of us, Bones. It's a chance we'll have to take. Hmm. Very dire situation if he's suggesting to sacrifice one to save the rest. I'm connecting the bypass circuit now, sir. Speed is essential, Lieutenant. Mr. Spock, I haven't done anything like this in years. I can think of no one better equipped to handle it, Miss Uhura. Please proceed. Sectors 1 through 25, charted and examined. No chance at all of power originating in those areas. Continue the search. Aye, sir. Unable to break completely loose from this force field, but we might be able to punch some holes through it. We'll take these equations to the nuclear electronics lab. I want them to work on the problem of negating the force field in selected areas. So if they can find pinpoint the source of the energy, and if they can shoot through the energy field that's holding them, they might be able to get rid of his power. Trying to escape me. It's useless. I know everything you do. I try to be compassionate toward your kind. You know nothing about our kind. Your tricks don't frighten us, neither do you. Mankind has no need for gods. We find the one quite adequate. I offer you eternal rest and happiness. But what I ask for, I insist upon. Approach me. Light the ancient fires. Kill a deer. A power yes. has spoken. Go. <laughs> We're tired of your phony fireworks. Mortal! You have earned this! No, don't! You said you were gentle and understanding. Lieutenant! How can they worship you if you hurt them? Lieutenant. <laughs> You're ruining everything! You know so much of love. Ah, uh, she's just... Please don't hurt them. She's doing what she feels is best. She doesn't know their plan, though. I shall be lenient with you. For her sake. You will make plans to bring the rest of your people down. You will dismantle your ship for the supplies you need. And I'll crush its empty hull. I shall be patient no longer. She risked her life for him, for Kirk. Captain, we've got to do something. We were doing something until our brave lady stepped in and saved us. Any more good <laughs> ideas, Jim? Yes, I have. One more, and it depends on the lieutenant's loyalty. If she fails us, her loyalty to them or to Apollo? I offer you more than your wildest dreams have ever imagined. To become the mother of a new race of gods. All men will revere you. And I shall love you for time without end. You shall complete me and I you. She's into him. I think she's into him. What's happened to her? Scotty, I'll find out. Uh, perhaps if I assisted. How old are you? 22, sir. Then I'd better handle it. <laughs> He's so young. He wants us to live in peace. He'll give us everything we ever wanted. And Except he can freedom. Do too. He thrives on love, worship, attention. We can't give him that worship. None of us can, especially you. What? Reject him. You must. You're special to him. I love him. Oh, boy. Reject him, and we have a chance to save ourselves. Accept him, and you condemn all of us to slavery. Nothing less than slavery. He's kind, and, and he wants the best for us. What you ask would break his heart. Okay, well, boo-hoo. What about all of our hearts? Give me your hand. Human flesh against human flesh. We're the same. We're human. And the only thing that's truly yours is the rest of humanity. That's where our duty lies. Yes, I understand. But will you do what you need to do? You have your orders and your duty. Yes, sir. My orders and my duty. Hmm. I guess following Kirk's orders is kind of like another form of slavery if she no longer wants to do it. But he does give her a choice, even though he strongly advises that she <laughs> go along with his plans. Is there a structure of some sort near you? There is indeed, Mr. Spock. A 
power emanates from there. Have Mr. Sulu lock all phaser banks onto the structure. Fire on my order only. We've got to wait until Carolyn comes back before we fire on the temple. She might get killed. Yes, I know. We'll wait. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> there are some other things I must know. Your evolutionary patterns and your social development. My what? My what? I've never encountered a specimen like you before. Specimen. I've chosen you. Well, I'm sure that's very flattering, but I must get on with my work now. Your work? <sighs> well, surely you know I've only been studying you. You love me. Well, I could no more love you than I could love a new species of bacteria. Damn! She she called him as low as bacteria to her. Is that the secret of your power over women? The thunderbolts you throw? Oh, he's mad now. What the devil is that? Stand by your faces, Mr. Spark. Prepare to fire on my signal, Kirk out. Should they get away from the structure? Captain, we've got to go and find him. We've got to be here when he comes back. But what if he doesn't? What if Scotty, what? just hold on. <laughs> well, hard to love this guy now. Mr. Spock, fire those phasers. You don't blindly love and worship him, then this is what he turns into. you I would have loved you as a father loves his children did I ask so much we've outgrown you you asked for something we can no longer give mm -hmm. I was just about to comment on that if he truly needs I loved you I would have made a goddess of you see what you've done to me no don't play the victim here buddy Hera, Aphrodite, Athena, you were right. There is no room for gods. Take me. But there's a whole universe out there with civilizations that would gladly worship them as humans did 5,000 years ago, no? I... Wish we hadn't had to do this. So do I. The Greek civilization, much of our culture and philosophy came from a worship of those beings. Would it have hurt us, I wonder, just to have gathered a few laurel leaves? I do find it fascinating, the idea of beings that humans or a civilization once looked at as gods to be not quite gods but powerful enough and strong enough to be worshipped as gods during that time i was thinking at the very start that this guy was apollo and kirk was like well you know let's get to the bottom of this basically making it seem like this guy was going to be some kind of person who who fantasized about this greek mythology and wanted to become one of them wanted to become Apollo, this person who only exists in myth, and I'm glad that he actually turned out to be the Apollo. I thought that was a very neat twist, which was what I was thinking and hoping would be the case right from the start. So I was a little bit disappointed when I thought that Kirk was going to find out that he's just some silly human who's just playing make-believe. Kind of like Trelane, although Trelane is a higher more powerful and advanced species in every way he was just kind of playing dress up playing house playing make-believe this guy was the legit thing whatever he was so a species of creatures that 
that their sustenance seems to actually be worship, love, and adoration from a lower species. I really think that he should not have focused on Earth to try to gain that, but I suppose he just didn't understand? I wonder why when they deemed Earth and humans unable to be fit to give them that adoration, why they couldn't just move on? I mean, clearly this guy has the power to go from planet to planet. Maybe he ran out of power. He didn't have enough to continue his trek. So when these humans came by, he saw it as his last opportunity to survive, essentially. And he really didn't have any bad intentions, I don't think. But again, he just didn't understand. Humans had evolved in such a way that they could no longer serve one another. Like was necessary. This might be an unpopular opinion and I might get some flack for this, but I will always be honest with you guys on how I feel, but I was not too thrilled with the way that they wrote Scotty's character. I do understand that it's very easy to have a lapse in judgment when it comes to somebody that you're infatuated with, but we have seen time and time again the members of this crew being able to keep their composure in very tough situations. And while the first outburst with Scotty is quite understandable given the situations and his feelings and his gallantry, it didn't seem right in character from what we know about him. And we've seen his professionalism and his reverence to Kirk. The fact that he kind of kept going on and on even though Kirk was telling him to stop and calm his damn self down, he kept on doing it. Uh, it was a little bit, just a tiny bit aggravating to me. But I did, on the flip side of that, like to see a different facet of his character. We got to see a little romantic side, a little bit of Twitter patient, as I like to uh, use the phrase. I really enjoyed how the crew that was still on the ship was able to really shine in their ingenuity and they're working together to solve a problem. A lot of times it seems like it's left solely to the landing party to figure out how to get out of a sticky situation, but in this case we got to see Spock and Sulu and Uhura using their strengths, their ingenuity, their skills to come up with a solution. And lastly, about the idea of the godlike beings in this universe, none of them have been portrayed as an actual god, and I was kind of under the impression, I guess, or I never really thought about it, that the characters might have some kind of religion or belief in a god. One of the lines that made me think about that for the first time was when Kirk said, we don't need any more gods, just the one is enough. Which leads me to believe that the characters and the showrunners are probably thinking about and believing in a single Christian god most likely. And uh, yeah, that's just not something that I ever really thought about. So I just found it kind of interesting to for that to come forward through to the show, if that makes any sense. So I guess the way that religion is handled in fiction was probably different back then than it is maybe now, and if anybody can shed some light upon that, then I would be very interested to hear. And to wrap all of this up, this was one of my more enjoyed episodes I think of the season so far, though we still have a lot to do. A lot to get through, which again is exciting, but the set of this one was a lot of fun. The ideas in it, of course the costuming is great, but we never learned who Adonais is. So I think I'm going to have to do a little bit research right now. Just give me a moment. Okay, so this is probably a little bit more than I can understand with just a quick little research of, but Adonais is the title of an elegy written by Percy Shelley 
for John Keats, who was an author. It says the title of the poem is modeled on ancient works such as Achilles, which is a poem about Achilles, and in it, the untimely death of the Greek Adonis is referred. So what does that mean for the title of this episode? I'm not exactly sure. And I could be going down the completely wrong trail here. Who mourns for Adonis? Adonis was the mortal lover of the goddesses Aphrodite and Persephone who is famous for having achieved immortality. So I can see the kind of pieces to the puzzle here. So we have Adonis who was widely considered to be the ideal of male beauty in classical antiquity. A person in Greek mythology, we have Shelley who befriended Keats and probably loved him very much as a friend and thought maybe he was a beautiful person, thus connecting him to Adonis and then modeling the title of this poem of this eulogy after Achilles or however you would say it um, to make it Adonis. I would love to hear some insight if you guys have it, if there's been like an interview with the writer of this episode or anything like that. And yeah, that's about all the brain cells I have for right now. This was kind of a lot. Um, very interesting. Maybe one of those episodes that I'll keep thinking of later on. Who knows? Lots of really intriguing ideas and thoughts that come out of this one. So thank you guys again for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed it. How would you rank this episode? And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.